It's time! By way of Las Vegas in an office that is fucking beautiful. <laughs> weighing in what looks to be an incredibly shredded 250 pounds. Bench pressing 450. Fuck it, Friday meals are delicious. President of the UFC, Dana! White. Hey, what up? Yeah! <laughs> What's up, bro? <laughs> How are you, man? What's up, boys? Good morning. Hey, thank you for joining us. How are you? Biggest fight card maybe in the history of UFC, just days away, UFC 270. Congratulations. Yeah, How you go. feeling? How you feeling? Thank you. Good, good. Everything's good. I'm down here in Southern California now, and uh, oh, I'm excited for the fight, man. Yeah, so you're in Anaheim, California, and I was reading up on some of the stats. This is the biggest gate that the Honda Center has ever seen, 5 million plus, the biggest fight card. I mean, it's about to be an epic weekend on ESPN Plus for UFC. What are these final days? What are you doing right now? Just making sure everybody weighs in right, getting the security uh, filed perfectly, make sure nobody's uh, stealing the streams. Like, what is the final day prep here, is, uh, or is the hay in the barn, as they say? Well, we, we, we got an announcement that we're announcing later on today. No, do it now! Do it now, Dana! Do it now! Hey, we can just yeah, do it now. I, I, that I can't do. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. we, got, we have a press conference, and we're, we're, we're going on Sports Center Live and, and, and all that good stuff. So I'm running around doing PR, last-minute PR here, and uh, and that's it. Tomorrow's the weigh-ins, and then, and then the fight. Yeah. Dana, you guys have uh, obviously an unbelievable stable of fighters in all weight classes, but how good is it to have a heavyweight guy, champion like Francis Ngannou, obviously Cyril Gan, who he's fighting, another stud? Like When the big dudes are out there knocking each other out, I feel like it has to be good for business. Yeah, well, one, one of the things that's great right now is our heavyweight division is stacked. It's, it's, it's bigger and better than it's ever been. And going into a weekend like this, you absolutely positively have the two best heavyweights in the world this one is actually champion versus champion. And the other thing that's fun about it is they're both, um, you know, two of the best strikers in their own right. You got Francis Ngannou with a 100% finish rate. He can knock you out with either hand. And then you got Cyril Gaon, who is technically probably the best heavyweight of all time. So this isn't going to be like a, a knockout artist versus a jiu-jitsu guy. The jiu-jitsu guy's got to get him down. These guys are going to stand and they are going to bang and that's what you want out of heavyweights francis and gone is an underdog in this fight which was wild for us to see on the sports yeah. book it's yeah. like plus 125 for him to get a win plus 145 to get a knockout it's like i don't know if that's enough juice to really predict a knockout but what you just said is these guys are finishers you're expecting this fight to be ended in a beautiful fashion as a, a as a fight maker and it feels like there's a lot well, of anything is possible you you, you got francis and gone who has the power to end the fight and any moment and you got Cyril gone who stays on the outside and, and and throws unbelievable punches elbows kicks and just picks people apart I can't wait to watch uh there's a lot of drama is there now maybe perceived drama about Francis's future and in the wrestling world right Bret Hart became champion and then he just kind of left with the belt was what was going to happen then there was an entire screw job and then there's other situations where deals for business aren't settled for the future and they become champion and it becomes a big deal is this all promotion leverage you think or what is the future after this fight depending upon what happens I guess that thing figures it out but your business side of things gets talked about more than anybody else in history I think yeah, um, you know, this happens sometimes going into these type of fights. And, yes, there's tons of drama about his contract. Then you have all the bad blood between the camps because they both came out of the same camp. And the list goes on and on. Vince McMahon could not write a better script for this weekend. It, it, and it's all real, and it's all going to happen on Saturday. I don't know what, where we're going to end up with Francis, um, you know, after the fight. He, he and I bumped into each other. A couple weeks ago at dinner, our tables were literally right next to each other at, at a restaurant. And, uh, you know, it was like the universe meant for us to get together and talk a couple weeks ago. We had a great conversation. We'll see how this thing plays out uh, after Saturday. Whenever you're doing those negotiations and conversations, and obviously you've talked to us before, like, 
we're in a combative sport. We're in a fighting. Everybody hates everybody, right? I got beef with this guy. I got beef with this guy. I got beef with this guy. This guy hates me. This guy does that. How do you maintain those negotiations business-wise to keep things good, but also to remain at the top? Because there's a bunch of other leagues coming out. There's a bunch of other fight leagues. Do you even acknowledge that they exist, or do you just know that if UFC puts on the best shows, it doesn't matter what anybody else does? Yeah, I don't really pay attention to what anybody else is doing. I just pay attention to what I need to do. Um, and, and, you know, we run into these situations every once in a while. When you think about it, we have 750 fighters under contract, you know, literally all the time for, for like the last six years. So, of course, you're going to run into – not everybody is going to agree, not everybody. And everybody wants more money. Everybody wants more money. It's, it's it's human nature. You don't hear anybody going, yeah, these guys are paying me way too much. Uh, you know, it, it just doesn't work that way. So we're, we, we run a business. We've been running our business for 20 years. Lots of people uh, have opinions on how we run our business. But like I tell them all, if you think you can do it better than me, go out and do it. Uh, you know, yeah. there's guys out there, there's other leagues out there. That are that, that are in this business too, and I think this weekend's fight card is quite a stamp on like your dominance of UFC, and it's going to be a hell of a show. The place is going to be packed out. It's going to be massive. This flyweight title, though, you know, Moreno versus Figueroa, the third, the trilogy here, you know, with champ versus champ. What are what are these two fighters about? Are they going to fly around to it, or is it just going to be chaos this entire fight? Like when you sat in that art of war room with your fight makers, and you're making this decision. You just thought to yourself, you know what? UFC 270 is just going to be a fucking bloodbath. Is, is that like is that the vision that you had for this? And should we be expecting that? Uh, yeah, well, it's, you said it at the open of, of, of this interview. You know, it's true. We're, we're heading back into Southern California for the first time in like two and a half, three years. The record at the Honda Center was held by the Rolling Stones at three and a half million. We, we're doing a five million dollar gate there. We have number one and number three all time at the Honda Center, uh, you, you know, you want to come back in here with a great card. So we have a great main event. You couldn't have a better heavyweight fight. It's one of the best heavyweight fights ever in the history of the sport. Um, and then the co-main event, uh, Moreno has turned into a huge superstar, uh, the first ever Mexican-born world champion in the UFC. Then you have, have Figueredo, who, you know, put, put this picture out days ago of the shape that he's already in. He is shred. I mean, find this picture of him on the internet of how ripped this dude is for this fight. And uh, and think about this. That's before he even started cutting weight. This guy, I don't I have no idea what this guy's going to look like tomorrow when he steps on that scale. Um, you know, which 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 tells you he's taking this fight very serious. He's, he's, got, he's cut the weight the right way. He's in great shape and should be an amazing fight. Dana, speaking of, of chaos that Pat mentioned with the uh the perceived like animosity going into this fight between you and maybe fighters, which happens all the time. You seem to like lean into it. Do you, do you tend to thrive in chaos? Do you sometimes maybe get bored if things are just going smoothly? Uh, no, no, things <laughs> going smoothly is, is actually nice. I, I like when things go smoothly, you know, but chaos and nuttiness is this business. It's this business. It's what makes it so fun, makes it so exciting. You know, Every day when you wake up, I mean, it, it, Pat was just saying it a minute ago, too, and it's so true. There is always drama in this sport. There's always something going on. Somebody's mad. Somebody's talking shit. Somebody's this. Somebody's that. But it, but it all adds to the excitement leading into, like I said, this Saturday, McMahon couldn't write a better script for how this is, is, is laying out on Saturday, you know? Do you and Vince know each other? Yes, we do. Well, that makes a lot of fucking sense. You know, it feels, like, it feels like that would be a relationship that would make a lot of sense. Do you think about the future of the UFC other than just the fights? Because I know you're tight with the Nelk boys and everything they got going on. They just made $23 million yesterday. Congrats to them. I was there. Hey, congrats. I was there. I was, I was at their headquarters yesterday when, when they had just wrapped that whole thing up. Brilliant. These yes. kids are brilliant. Yeah, Steve. Yeah, I love everything they're about. They're paving a way for a lot of people to try and emulate, but work ethic and talent. There's a lot that goes in there. But whenever you're thinking about the UFC, and I see them around, and I know whenever you had fights in Abu Dhabi, there was other influencers there. Are you building a network? Do you even focus on anything other than fighting, or how do you see the future of the UFC? Well, yeah, I mean, I'm I'm involved in a lot of other things too, you know, outside of the UFC. But you know, when when I when I connect with people that I really like, and I like the Nelk Boys a lot. And, uh, you know, we've done a lot of stuff together. 
And, uh, you know, I, I just, I don't at a point in my life where I work with people that I like to work with and, and that's it. Um, if I don't like you, then I want nothing to do with you. I respect. Hey, speaking of money, yeah. hey, speaking of big money, yeah. let's talk about your new deal. Hey. <laughs> I, I, I just heard about this thing a couple of days ago. Hey. Uh, holy shit. Yeah, Congratulations, just, man. That's I, incredible. Thank you, Dana. I appreciate you. And you said earlier, nobody's saying like, hey, I don't want more money. I don't, I don't deserve the money I got paid. But somebody was going to get it, Dana. Somebody was going to get it. So we might as well be the ones. And we're obviously very thankful for people like you stopping by. We appreciate you. No, nah, congrats. I mean, look, look at the business you built. You know, in, in a very short amount of time, my friend. Congratulations on all your success. Thank you. You too. We can't wait to watch on Saturday. We know you're very busy, so thank you for the time. Can't wait for the next time we get the chat. Thank you. Later, boys. Ladies and gentlemen, Dana White. Yeah! I would like his assistant going in there. Uh, hey, do you want to stop by McAfee show before this pay-per-view? Uh, yeah, I enjoy doing that show. Oh, yeah, by the way, also, <laughs> this happened. Check it out. <laughs> this <laughs> happened by the last time. You're, Holy shit! Fucking Friday, this guy got going on. <laughs> yeah. Dana's interesting, man. He's interesting because that whole um, I'm invested. I'm doing a lot of things that I enjoy outside the UFC as well. He's becoming like, oh, uh, yeah, oh, philanthropist. Man. Good for him. I'm pumped for him. Not well, philanthropist. I assume sure, he is yeah, and well, has been for that. sure. A lot of business, but happens. yeah, I'm talking investor yeah, and, yeah. and everything like that. Well, he also you, said bye to the boys too, which I just got pretty pumped about. First time to you guys. Yeah, he said, see you, boys. Oh, yeah, because you guys all got rich, too. He's, he's yeah. probably happy for all. Uh, I, think you, I think you was talking to AJ. Yeah, AJ. Shit! But, yeah. but you talked about new money have, earlier. Tony, you've had a couple of misses today. <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> the Browns and last Oh, play. yeah. That and wasn't had, me. Wow, you had that full laugh. I laughed. The whole, no, actually, you've corrected us. Yeah, stat that. Yeah. I'm sorry, dude. Hashtag stat, stat that. that. Stat that. Stat that.